Does your diesel have high EGTs, excessive smoke, increased turbo lag, maybe less power than it used to? Let's talk about boost leaks. Your truck needs air. Not a little bit of air. Your diesel engine needs all the incoming air it can get. Increasing air in the combustion process will increase available power, lower smoke output, and help manage your exhaust temperatures. Boost leaks kill diesel engines. Boost leaks result in smoky, laggy, dog of a truck that runs hot and burns fuel inefficiently. Basically, it's the exact opposite of what you want from your diesel. Boost leaks commonly occur in boots, clamps, and throughout the charge air system. They can be found anywhere from the turbocharger to the intake manifold. Your intercooling system, exhaust gas recirculation components, and even the turbocharger compressor cover itself can be infected with boost leaks, costing you power, fuel mileage, EGTs, everything we talked about before. Here's an example of a truck that developed some of the common symptoms of a boost leak. The truck behind me is a 2002 LB7. It's got 160,000 miles on it. The turbocharger has been swapped three times in the past two years. All the intercooler and intercooler piping are original and only the turbo gaskets were replaced during the swap. We purchased this truck a year ago for product testing. It tows regularly, makes full throttle passes on the dyno, it even gets taken to lunch now and then. It's a shop truck, so just about everybody in the shop gets to drive it. That means no one person gets to keep their thumb exactly on what's going on with this truck. Nobody consistently watches the gauges or monitors its performance. The symptoms went unchecked for quite some time. Over a few months, smoke output was steadily rising, MPGs steadily falling, and overall performance was on the decline. <clears throat> I drove the truck for the first time in a while, and, and I didn't even notice that there was a problem until I started to take off from a stop sign and I noticed there's an excessive trail of smoke behind the truck that wasn't there, you know, from what I could remember. Sure sign of a mechanical issue, nothing in the tune changed. You know, I've talked with all the guys that have driven the truck in the past month. We're down three miles per gallon over the past few tanks of fuel. Someone mentioned while towing with the truck that EGTs, you know, climbed from 900 to 1200 to 1300 very quickly, quicker than they remember. I'm sure if you were to compare a dyno pass from a year ago to a dyno pass today, we'd see a significant drop off in power compared to the way things were. While the truck has run several tuning revisions over the time we've owned it, nothing new has been flashed in the past few months. That's critical, right? Because if no tuning changes, then we can be fairly certain that this is a physical issue. Anytime we have a truck in the shop, we boost test it. In this case, our SuperTech Mike Gut Shell steps in to help us. The key to a thorough boost test is pressurizing the charged air system with the truck not running. Then we want to listen for leaks. The important part here is listening. You'll hear a distinct hissing sound wherever the leak is coming from. Some of the leaks are big, you'll see them right away. Some of the leaks are small. You may have to spray some soapy water on them to isolate exactly where they are, if it's on a uh, gasket or something like that. The more of the charge air system you can include in your test, the more accurate picture of the leak or the truck's health that you'll have. You wanna get from the intake of the turbocharger all the way to the intake manifold against the head. That's the complete charge air system and there can be a leak anywhere in that system. Here we're going to be using the new Calibrated Power Stealth Boost Tester. You can use either the intake air horn adapter or the faceplate adapter. On this LB7, I'll tell you why I picked the intake air horn adapter. The factory intake air horn has a nice thick flange. It seals up tightly to the turbocharger and it's easier to use the intake air horn adapter. And given that it's sealed, it's gonna do the job. Now on some trucks that come through the shop, we have sheet metal style intake on them. When the sheet metal style intake is on the truck, you can have a boost leak around these ports. This is not, not designed to hold pressurized air. So if you try and pressurize the face of this intake air horn, you're gonna have leaks around here. So in that case, if the truck has one of those on it, or if it's a fresh turbo install, we use the faceplate adapter. The faceplate adapter guarantees us a solid seal right to the face of the LB7 turbocharger, includes the three bolts, has all the specs and information on it to attach it correctly to the faceplate and test it. The intake air horn adapter includes this nice billet piece. On top of that, you got a four ply boot for, a, for an adapter. You got the clamps, okay, nice heavy duty T bolt clamps, no worm drive junk here. Then you got your adapter to the regulated air source. We include a very nice regulated air source. It's a liquid filled gauge, solid regulator, all nice mechanic grade stuff. 
let's head over to the truck. I'm gonna have Mike pull the factory intake off the truck and show you how this thing hooks up and how we use it. Okay, so Mike's gonna torque both of those T-bolt clamps to 90 inch pounds. It's important that he gets the torque right on there, one, so that he can feel what the proper torquing is on the clamp so that we don't over torque and strip the clamps out. Two, we want them to be torqued properly so that the boot doesn't come loose and turn into a projectile when we fill it with pressure. Okay, so he's torqued. He's gonna grab the regulator. First thing he's gonna do on the regulator is make sure that the valve is closed. Next thing, he's gonna loosen the regulator all the way. That's gonna ensure that we start at zero PSI. Then when he hooks up the, regula the regulator to shop air, he can open the valve slowly. Should stay at zero PSI, he should be able to tighten the regulator up to add, add boost. So as we add boost, we'll go up to about 10 PSI. Let's see if we can hear anything. We can already hear a hiss. Okay, so we have a problem here somewhere. We just need to find it. Yep. Okay, so we found a leak. It's right there on the top of the boot. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so close it. And then slowly open the valve, let all the air out of the system. It's important to let all the air out of the system, especially if you're gonna leave the boost tester connected because once he goes to pull that boot off, we don't want it to pop apart and hurt somebody. Once the air, all the air is out of the system, you're clear to replace that boot and we'll test it again. Here we go. So Mike has replaced the boot. We're going to hook the boost tester up again and repeat the test. It's important to repeat the test because usually, even if you find a large leak, you never know, you might have another small leak that you just didn't hear the first time. So what we wanna do is work the tester up. Let's get it up to 10 pounds. Do we hear any leaks? Cause I hear, I feel like I hear a leak right now. Okay, let's let the set the tester to the side and kind of pick your head in there, put your hand in there, see if you can find out where, narrow it down a little bit. Sounds like it's on top of the motor somewhere near the turbocharger or What do you see, Mike? Y bridge. The y bridge gasket's leaking. Yep. Lovely. Okay, so that's not an uncommon failure. Let's uh, let's show them kind of our trick for looking at pressure on the gauge. So turn the gauge off and let's show show the camera and let's show how fast the temperature drops or the sorry the pressure drops. So we're going to close the valve and then we're going to look for a pressure drop of more than one psi per second. This is a fairly slow leak. Still, we can hear it, we wanna fix it. But anything under one PSI per second, so if it's dropping less than one PSI per second, it's probably not going to impact performance in a, in a huge way. Still, we'll wanna fix that. So it looks like you got some more work, Mike. We gotta take that Y bridge off and reseal it. Awesome. And then, what do we do? Boost test it again. Well, productive day. We found at least two boost leaks on this truck. Every time a truck comes through the shop, we boost test it. 85% of the trucks that come through the shop have boost leaks. Fixing it, it's gonna lower the EGTs, just make the truck a lot nicer to drive, better performance, lower smoke, all the things you want out of your diesel. We have these kits available for most diesel trucks that we support. Check out the product video for under Boost Tester on DuramaxTuner.com. Give us a call. Whatever we can do to help, we're here for you. I'm Nick Pregnitz, thanks for watching.